Hello my lovelies, I'm Chris from Techspurn and today we're checking out the exceedingly green Infinix Note 40 Pro Plus 5G because of course you're always going to have the 5G. And this 6.78 inch Titan boasts some pretty solid gaming chops. You got 100 watt super fast smart charging, all kinds of AI related shenanigans and even a special spangly light slapped on that arse. Ooh. So let's whip the Infinix Note 40 Pro Plus on out of that box, test out the gaming chops, the camera tech, all that good stuff. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Chores. So first up, what do you get slapped in that box? Well, you've not just got the Note 40 Pro Plus, but you've also got a MagPad wireless charger. We tested out this bad boy in a bit. And inside that phone box, you've not too shockingly got an Infinix Note 40 Pro Plus. You've got a not ridiculously chunky 100 watt Infinix charger, obligatory USB cable. You've got some Type-C earphones bundled in there as well, and they don't look the most comfortable in the world. Certainly no soft silicon action involved, but it's a nice freebie. You will have to chuck the screen protector on yourself, but you do get a cleaning kit to clear any gunk off the screen before you do that. And Infinix has also included a condom case with the Note 40 Pro Plus, which is compatible with that MagSafe shenanigans for wireless charging. It's got a lovely soft touch finish to it, just like the phone itself, and it doesn't add much girth on there. And you've also got yourself some interesting Infinix stickers, particularly like the splash proof one. Maybe splash proof, but is it spurt proof? So the Infinix Note 40 Pro Plus is quite a spangly looking smartphone for an affordable blower. It's respectably skinny besides of course the usual jutting camera lens, which to be fair isn't too horrendous at all compared with some more premium blowers. It's a standard 6.78 inches, but it doesn't really feel it. Either that or my hands are just getting used to wielding massive beasts like this. Ladies. Unfortunately, I can't find any form of one-handed mode on the Infinix Note 40 Pro Plus, so you will struggle to reach up to the top end of that display when you are fumbling with it one-handed. And as you can see there, the screen does slope over the edges of the Infinix Note 40 Pro Plus. But thankfully, bug roll issues with responsiveness, even when I'm gripping this phone really tight, as you can see there, my fleshy bits intruding on the screen, but it's still absolutely behaving itself. Reasonably skinny bezels as well, so as I say, not much wasted space there, slims the design down a bit. And while the Infinix Note 40 Pro Plus does sport a basic plastic frame, which does feel kind of cheap, at least you've got this fake leather style texture around the back end. This makes the phone look a wee bit more interesting, adds a nice bit of grip. And also it means the phone doesn't get all smudgy if you happen to be a particularly greasy individual, like my good self. Infinix's branding is reasonably restrained, although for some reason they've again had to slap 5G on the back. Like, is that really something to boast about in 2024? It's like a small child who's super chuffed because they've just discovered nipples. Look, look, I've got these things. Yeah, we've all got them. Stop bloody shouting about it. And yeah, the camera housing is rather large, but it's not particularly ugly, and at least it stretches the whole width of the arse end of the phone. So when you're using it on a desk, poking and prodding it, it doesn't rattle about the place. And Infinix did mention that you've got Gorilla Glass protecting that display, though they helpfully didn't mention which version, so I'm guessing it's like Gorilla Glass 5 or something like that. And of course you've got the screen protector bundled in the box. And this phone is also IP53 splash resistance and get a wee bit wet, but don't go dropping it in a bath or a jacuzzi or anything. Now, like most modern mobiles, you've got an in-display fingerprint sensor. It's a wee optical effort down at the bottom edge here. Hasn't given me any jip so far. Just a quick tap of your thumb and you're straight in there. I do like the default lock screen, which is like a peephole into your phone, which then expands when you wake it up. Otherwise, you can replace this with an always-on display, which isn't actually always on at all. It just shows for a few seconds when you tap the phone, sometimes, or not. There we go. And you've also got a bit of face unlock action as well, which again seems pretty responsive, even when I'm a bit bleary eyed and haggard in the morning. And on the software side, you've got a good bit of Android 14 action with the slightly pony sounding XOS launcher slathered on top. Based on Android, apparently. Fills you with confidence. And apparently the Infinix Note 40 Pro Plus will enjoy two OS updates and three years of security updates. So we're getting there, kind of slowly. What I am really impressed by is the 256 gigs of storage you get stuffed into this thing. That's sadly not expandable via micro SD. You've just got room in that SIM tray for two SIM cards, but you know, at least it'll keep you going for a while. 
Now, XOS does tweak Android quite a considerable amount. So for instance, swipe right from your main desktop and you don't get the Google Discover feed, you get the zero screen or whatever the hell they call it. Complete with its usual delightful mantras, which are usually total bollocks. It's basically just a screen of customizable widgets. Then drag down, you've got your notifications bar at least and a good bit of apps tree action as well. And you've also got quite a few bonus bits squirreled away in the settings, plenty of personalization options. And oh yes, like most manufacturers, Infinix has well and truly downed the AI Kool-Aid. Although at least the AI wallpaper generator here isn't quite as restrictive as it is on the likes of Google and Samsung smartphones. You can actually type in what you want here, although let's face it, the Note 40 Pro Plus doesn't always exactly understand the brief. Where are the rhinos? Where's the pain and suffering? Let's see what we get if we ask for a cyberpunk version of Bruce Forsyth eating a ham and pickle sandwich. It, it's, uh... <laughs> I mean, that's not bad. I've got no idea what the f*** is going on with the furry rat on his face. I've got to admit, I'm getting slightly addicted to this now. Not quite what I asked for, but cute. Sadly, there does appear to be a limit to this, so we'll have to move on. And also on the AI front, you've got the Full Axe AI Assistant. Is apparently creative, thoughtful, and reliable, and very modest. And Folax apparently cares for your emotions, so let's test that out. I'm feeling sad today, Folax. I'm sorry to hear that you're feeling sad today. Is there anything specific that's on your mind? My pee pee hurts. I'm sorry to hear that you're experiencing discomfort. However, as an AI language model, I'm unable to provide medical advice. Oh, bedside manner could use a bit of improvement, but otherwise, fine. And apparently, Folax can effortlessly generate video scripts and academic papers, so let's give that a go. Write me a movie script that's kind of like a cyberpunk version of Macbeth. I'm sorry, but I don't have the capability to generate a movie script for you. Okay, so apparently Folax can't just generate a movie script for me, just give me advice on how to turn Macbeth into a cyberpunk flick. I actually have to do all the legwork myself. Ugh. And another jazzy feature here on the Infinix Note 40 Pro Plus is the active Halo Lighten. Basically just a multi-coloured light that's slapped there on the back end. You can actually use it as a notifications light. All you've got to do is tap your way into active Halo Lighten in the settings. Then as you can see there, you can set it up for incoming calls, notifications. You can even have it flashing when you're charging the phone, playing games or music, etc. As I say, fully customizable as well. You've got three different settings, lively, rhythmic, and AI with a variety of different color options. Hey, you know, notification lights are pretty rare these days, so it's good to see Infinix making a bit of an effort. Oh, and you may have already noticed that the Note 40 Pro Plus does sport an Apple-style float and turd option whenever you're trying to do a bit of face unlock action, whenever you receive a call, etc. Not sure why everyone wants to mimic the float and turd, it's literally just a stupid gimmick that Apple concocted to distract thick people from the fact that the selfie orifice thing was ridiculously massive. And thankfully, the selfie cam here on the Note 40 Pro Plus is just your usual dinky wee round effort. Barely intruded on that mighty 6.78 inch AMOLED display. It's certainly a good one for kicking back with some cinematic fare, even though the Full HD resolution isn't quite as crisp as some 1.5K rivals. You don't have any dedicated HDR support here, though Infinix is claiming 10-bit color reproduction. As usual, you can slightly tweak the color output in the display settings if you want to. They're reasonably poppy and punchy to begin with. If not quite as vivid and vibrant as what you'll get on the likes of a Samsung display. On the maximum brightness levels, you'll certainly have no troubles with outdoor visibility. Sadly, the brightness doesn't scale down quite as far as I would have liked, but it's not too bad. And all the usual eye care modes, all that good stuff. And the screen refresh rate maxes out at 120 hertz. You could also manually set it to either 60 or 120. You've also got yourself a bit of JBL branded stereo speaker setup action on here with an equalizer if you fancy it. So you can manually tweak that output. And when I say JBL branded, I do mean it. It's even stamped up here on the top edge of the phone. However, when you max out that volume, the output won't exactly melt your face off. Let's just try it out. So you're sick of how everything is a bit crap and you want to hide away in a make-believe virtual reality world where you can be a badass bounty hunter or a super suave spy or a something else alliterative. Even though it's a stereo speaker output, the majority of that audio is spaffed out from the bottom edge rather than the earpiece or slightly imbalanced. 
But you know, it's fine as long as you're not trying to listen to a video in a noisy environment. Sadly, no headphone jack action here. So I, it's dongle or Bluetooth all the way. So what about the performance? Well, Infinix's stuffed MediaTek Dimensity 7020 chipset inside of the Note 40 Pro Plus. And that's backed here by a generous 12 gigs of RAM. So the everyday performance has been absolutely fine, nice and smooth when you're skipping around using lots of apps at the same time. And near bother if you want to get gaming on the likes of Genshin Impact and other memory hogs like that as well. The Infinix Note 40 Pro Plus can handle it without soiling itself. I somewhat optimistically chuck this game up to the highest graphics settings at 60 frames per second, just out of curiosity more than anything else. And yes, unsurprisingly, saw quite a few stumbles in that frame rate. It didn't hold anywhere near 60 frames per second, even on the game and performance modes. So I definitely recommend sticking to the medium levels at most. But the screen was pretty responsive despite being a curvy effort and Infinix has chucked in a mighty vapor chamber in here to keep things cool and thankfully that does do a solid job. The Note 40 Pro Plus didn't get toasty even after an hour of action. And of course you've got XOS's dedicated gaming mode which is a feature packed affair including the usual performance mode shenanigans, you've got plenty of concentration tools in there. And you'll also find options to bypass the battery when you're gaming with the phone plugged in so it doesn't heat up. And did you know that this phone supports 5G as well? I'm not sure if they really advertise that enough. And the battery capacity isn't quite as big as some other rivals. You've got a 4,600 mAh cell stuffed in that skinny frame. And so far, the battery life has frankly been excellent. You should see even the most demanding of power users through a full day of intensive use on a single charge. Even when you're full on using that camera or doing a good bit of gaming, again on the likes of Genshin, the drain isn't too bad at all. And you've got plenty of dedicated battery saving settings and everything stuffed in here too. Just to optimise the running, make sure nothing's draining that battery unnecessarily. And when this bad boy does need juicing up, well you've got 100 watt wired charging support. And Infinix has also stuffed in its new Cheetah X1 charge management chip to help prevent overcharging type situations. So jump on into the charge section of the battery settings. You can adjust the charging speed. You've got those bypass charging settings once again, so you can prevent the battery from charging up just to keep the phone from heating up under duress. You've also got AI charging protection. It's a feature you'll find in quite a lot of phones these days, just prevents the battery from fully charging up and just extends the health. And ah, you've even got 20 watt wireless charging support here on the Infinix Note 40 Pro Plus quite rare to find it around the sort of mid-range price point. And the Note 40 Pro Plus comes bundled with this MagPad wireless magnetic charger. Just a wee hockey puck that basically you can plug a Type-C USB cable into and it acts as a wireless charger. Just slap it on the back end of your Infinix Note 40 Pro Plus and it'll start powering up. And then last up for this, a lovely wee Infinix Note 40 Pro Plus 5G unboxing. Let's have a squint at the camera tech. And this doesn't appear to have changed up too much from the Infinix Note 30 series blows that I tested out. You've once again got a 108 megapixel primary shooter with optical image stabilization. Camera app is absolutely packed with toggles and features. So you've got the usual AI shenanigans if you want to really boost the colors, make things look a little bit surreal. You do have a full on 108 megapixel mode as well if you want to max out that resolution. And then all of the usual dedicated modes as well, including a portrait mode. You've got a super night mode for those evening shots and lots more bits packed in there. And oh yes, this includes the obligatory AR shenanigans so I can finally fulfill my lifelong dream of having hair. Mm. And of course, it's in ambient light where things fall down a bit as usual with these more budget friendly mid ranges, especially if your subject can't keep still. But everyday snaps in well-lit environments come out fairly well with reasonably accurate colour reproduction. And you do have a dedicated night mode which can brighten things up a wee bit for your proper evening shots. You will notice however there's no ultra wide angle shooter here on the Infinix Note 40 Pro Plus. Sadly the other two sensors are just a pair of crappy 2 meg efforts. And if you want to shoot some video you can do so at full HD resolution by default. You can bump that up to 2K resolution if you want to. There's no 4K option here sadly. And you can also adjust the bokeh style action while you're shooting video. Although to be honest this doesn't really seem to make a massive amount of difference. You've also got a variety of film modes which basically just adds a filter to your footage. And then last up around front you've got a dedicated 32 megapixel selfie shooter. Quite a wide angle one as well. So you can certainly fit plenty of background action on the go. Good for those group shots or groofies or whatever idiots call them. 
And once again, you can record up to two key resolution footage using the front facing selfie camera. And the audio pickup's pretty good on this thing. The, uh, the mics pick up your voice clearly and cleanly, even if you're a fair distance away from the phone. So certainly good if you do do a bit of Skyping and all that. And there you have it, my lovelies. That in a delicious wee nutshell is the fresh new Infinix Note 40 Pro Plus 5G. And, you know, a few wee qualms with good old XOS and the general software setup aside. It's some pretty decent hardware in here. The battery life is excellent. Performance good enough for a bit of gaming when you need it. And you get a few bonus bits like the flashy LED arse thingy. Of course, performance is a priority for you. Then you will find better elsewhere from the likes of Poco and Xiaomi. But it'd be great to hear your thoughts on the Infinix Note 40 Pro Plus 5G. Definitely bang those down in the comments below. Pug subscribe, ding that notifications bell, all the usual YouTube guff, and have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.